Hello there, my name is Pixel Pluto and welcome to another episode of Cinders, a gorgeous indie visual novel based on the fairy tale Cinderella. And last time we, or better said, Cinders met Madame Gid, talked about talked with her about her mother, and Madame Gid uh, will support us, apparently will help us somehow. We also talked to Tobias. And yeah, a lot of things are going to happen. Lady Carmosa is not at home right now and Gloria, the elder sister that you see here, took charge of the household. And yeah, let's see what will happen. The chapter here apparently is also called the elder sister. So let's continue with my dramatic reading. Cinders, are you awake? I'm awake. I'll be right there. I'll get to work in a minute. No, it's not about that. I just need to talk to you. Oh ho. All right, Gloria, what is it? What is so important that you have to speak with me at this hour? At this hour? You mean noon? I wanted to speak with you about the way you've been behaving these past few days. Oh, sorry. Now there goes my nice morning or afternoon. It's not like that, Cinders. I actually came here to... Well, thank you. Oh, no. All right, Cinders imagination. Now you really need to wake up. You're right. Our relationship hasn't been very good in the past, but I can see this changing. Lately, you've started behaving more reasonably and responsibly. You are less self-centered and more aware of our common interest. I just wanted to tell you that I noticed... that I noticed and that I appreciate this little bit of support from you deeply. Oh, well, I'm really surprised. I don't really know how to respond. Now, last time I said that I'm not really... Um, I'm still not really uh, trusting the younger stepsister Gloria, I uh, no, yeah, Sophia. So I'm also a little bit wary of, of Gloria here, but okay. Oh well, I'm really surprised. I don't really know how to respond. Thanks, I guess? It wasn't something I planned, you know, this change you speak of. Then miracles do happen. As mother always says, causes aren't important, only consequences matter. So no matter what caused you to change, what's important is that you are maturing, and it's, it is a good thing indeed. Excuse me, mature? Yes, become an adult, a person who is able to grasp a larger picture, go beyond one's own interests. Also someone who can sacrifice personal happiness for the greater good of the house, if it is necessary. I don't deny that it can be difficult at times, but we are not children anymore. We must realize how we all depend on Carmosa and support her in any way we can. I see. Well, it certainly doesn't play well with my idea of maturity, especially that part of about... that part about supporting Carmosa. Of course you would say that. Just like you, mother can be a difficult person to get along with, I admit. But her intentions are good. Think about the way she's putting all her strength into giving us a good life. And if you still doubt her, try imagining our lives without her. Oh boy. Don't mind if I do. How long do you think this house would last with her gone? You must understand she won't be here to care for us forever. And I can't do it alone, Cinders. I need your support. Hmm. What should I say? I guess you are right. You are wrong. I mean... Carmos, no, uh, I always, uh, man, I always confuse the names. Gloria is kind of right about that, but she cannot. I mean, on the one hand, yes, she cannot depend all the time on Carmosa, but does she really think she can always depend on Cinders? I mean, what if she decides at some point, yeah, I'll just go because I can't take this anymore? That would be my response, at least. <laughs> but. Um, you must understand she won't be here to care for us forever, and I can't do it alone, Cinders. I need your support. Okay, I'll go with that one. 
All right, I see your point, and as much as I had to accept it, I think I can agree with at least part of what you're saying. Of course, Carmosa means well, it's her house and we are her daughters after all, at least you are. It's her actions, not her intentions, that I have trouble understanding. But maybe not anymore, perhaps we are more alike than I've imagined. We are survi survivors, doing what's necessary to cope with the situation we've been presented with. Such insights you give such insights give you credit, Cinders. They tend to come with age. If that's true, then Carmosa must be really old and her sight is completely different than mine. That would explain some things which Maybe she's a victim of harsh circumstances, maybe she did have to struggle all the time. And yes, maybe I can't really imagine what she went through. But think about the woman she became, a black widow, so spiteful that she hurts her own children. But cinders. Please let me finish, Gloria. With all the pain she suffered, there was a lesson there that she missed. Sometimes being nice to people around you can make all the difference in the world. She has no right, no right whatsoever to turn our lives into hell, Gloria, and you know it. She is how she is, Cinders. She is doing her best to manage everything and it is a great burden. She can be terrible, but only because life can be terrible to her. You surely don't intend to change her now. Oh yes, no doubt about that. I'm not talking about changing her arachnid nature. <laughs> I'm talking about changing ours. We could certainly use some improvement in our natures, you know. This picture you are painting in front of my eyes seems pleasant, but also not very realistic. It requires one thing which we do not have, mutual agreement. And who will not have that as long as we are not, one, not of one mind, that is, as long as Sophia keeps up her silly act. Gloria, I doubt that it is Sophia who we should be worrying about in this situation. I'm having trouble picturing her opposed to anything that would bring us more freedom from Carmosa. No, Gloria, it's you. You are the unknown in this equation. We can't be sure about your loyalties. Now this is something I didn't expect. You behaving just like Sophia. It would seem that you two have much more in common than meets the eye. You both prefer to spend your time criticizing me rather than trying to contribute. You could be helping me, helping us somehow. How can we understand each other if you do not even try? Then maybe you should stop whining about being criticized and start listening. How exactly did you try to communicate with Sophia? How much effort did you put into it? Correct me if I'm wrong, but she isn't exactly the happiest girl in the world. The hate that you and Carmosa poured into her through the years took its toll. Her bitterness and armor of cynicism are like a cry for help. If only you could give her any credit, any recognition, then maybe she'd be willing to help you. She hardly seems interested in... Let me finish. Before you judge her with your usual presumptions, tell me this. When was the last time you actually talked with her? Do not be ridiculous, Cinders. I spoke with her as recently as yesterday. I don't mean commenting on house affairs or managing chores, but actually talking, like sisters. You do remember that you two are sisters, right? Or is family only important to you if it allows you to put blame on other people? <laughs> Alright, I see where this is going. Fine, I am not really certain when it happened, but we did lose our connection. She seems so alien now, I catch myself thinking about her like a stranger. Her face is like a mask shielding her thoughts from me. I agree that it is unfortunate and it isn't only Sophia's fault that we grew apart. Maybe we could work on changing that. You may be thinking that I'm telling you this to criticize you, but I'm not. All I want is to, he to hear you say things like this. So that we can stop hurting each other all the time. It is the only reasonable thing to do. And you are always the most reasonable mon one, so it's good that you are willing to give it a try. And so you recognize it as well. I am the most reasonable. <laughs> and I am the only one here that actually does anything to keep up the house. That might be just a bit of an overstatement, Gloria. Each one of us puts some work into how this place works, for better or worse. We just have different perspectives, and so we give a different kind of input, but... Surely you realize how naive that sounds. It is something one might say to a slow child to spare its feelings. I have tried to help you both understand the importance of Carmosa's rules, and yet I seem to be the only one acknowledging the requirements to keep a proper household. Will nobody ever learn? 
How long am I supposed to guide you and work alone against the laziness and stupidity of others? <coughs> yeah, you just want to impose your own rules now, that's all. Hasn't it ever occurred to you that you might not have all the answers? Because that's the root of the problem right there. You try to be our teacher or our disciplinarian. You have no knowledge that we lack, nor a higher status, and you are not our mother. Stop trying to imitate Carmosa. Is this how you think a sister should act? How should I know? Do any of you act like one towards me? What should I do? Reason with her. Not that it will help, apparently, but... Oh, such debate skills you have. Attacking me as a person clearly proves you are the reasonable and logical one. I am not the one at fault here. You are not the only one at fault here. We all are. Reason dictates that all the sides of a conflict contribute to its current state, and so we all did. Let us assume that is correct. What would you propose, then? Then Sophia and I would have to admit we were wrong to attack you and hinder, you effort, hinder your efforts to take care of the house. Oh, so true. You, on the other hand, would have to admit that you blindly mimicked Carmosa rather than using your own reason and abilities to best take care of the house. We all need to change our ways if things are to improve. Blame is not important. Refraining from our old habits and working together is. <coughs> Oof. That does conjure up a good image. I think I would like such a change. One thing, though. Do you really think I, mim I mimic Carmosa? Gloria, would you please stop for a second to think and answer one simple que question truthfully? And what question might that be? What do you like to do? I... And no, I don't mean something that you feel obliged to do. Not a chore, necess not a chore necessity or an assignment. What do you like to do? What makes you happy? What do you just what do you do just for yourself and nobody else? But what are your goals? What will you do when Carmosa's not here anymore? Where do you want to go? Who do you want to be? I I do not know. I just want to make everything better. This house should work as intended and it should do so because of me. I want to make everyone happy and keep it all together. Fine, and when you accomplish that, Imagine the house is running smoothly, Carmosa is proud of you and at ease, all, task, all tasks complete. What would you do with all your free time then? Oof, I need a little bit of water. <coughs> I do not know what to say, indeed, such a situation seems highly unlikely to occur. So I have not given it any thought, I... Who are you? What do you know about yourself? It's getting philosophical here. I... I do not know. That's fine, you don't have to answer me, just yourself. It may take time and effort, but that is all I meant. I didn't mean to hurt you. And yet you did. I'm sorry, but I think someone had to say it, and you needed to hear it. You are not alone. We all have, we all have our issues, and we all have it hard. I am simply concerned about you. You seem lost in Carmosa's expectations, lost long enough to even lose your true self. And who should I be? That is precisely the question you shouldn't be asking anyone, apart from yourself, that is. We could use a sister, though, especially Sophia needs one. That sounds nice. We all need to work on sorting out our own problems and not waste effort taking things out on each other. This is the only way things will work out. I guess I thought things would work out for the best if I pleased Carmosa. But my efforts never seem to be sufficient. I think you are right, and there is no normal life to be found in that path. I'm sorry. Yet it is hard for me to accept everything you are saying, my dear. That's fine. We have lived this pattern for so long and we have only started the process of breaking it. And it does not come easily. I'm glad we've had a chance to talk, dear sister. Thank you for really listening. I am glad as well. So, sisters? How about friends? That is a start. So anyway... Oh, there is another reason I came to see you. Take today for yourself. I do not see a use for you in the house, since everything seems to be running smoothly. Thank you, Gloria. If that's the case, how about taking some time off? 
Don't you want to do something just for fun? No, no, I do not think it is wise to leave the house unsupervised. I did hear you though, it is just... But you go ahead, your life is not easy, so you have the right to use this time of freedom. I do recognize you as a reasonable adult capable of making wise decisions about how to spend your time. I really, really appreciate that. I think I will use this time to get out, so... Cinders, do you... do you think Sophia hates me? I couldn't say for sure, it is possible, but regardless of whether she does or doesn't, your relationship can be fixed, you know that, don't you? Thank you, friend, for your honesty as well as making an attempt to cheer me up. Have a good day. It's getting psychological here. Hello there, Hall. Let's see what new surprises you have in store for me today. Because I have to warn you, after the conversation I just had, I'm hard to impress. Hello there, early bird. Only old surprises, apparently. You really should try harder next time, Hall. Having a conversation with the room, how bizarrely refreshing. It's good to see you too, Sophia. Now I never thought I'd say something like this, but here it goes. Carmosa was right, too much reading does make you crazy. But evidently it also makes you interesting, at least interesting enough to make my eternally uptight sister sneak into your room when she thought I wasn't looking. I seriously doubt she's that naive. Doesn't matter. The real question is, what did she want from you? Did she come to ask for help? So many hours without the chance to struggle for Carmosa's approval must have left the poor girl quite disturbed. Come on, Sophia, quit it already. She was actually quite nice to me, relatively speaking. She even had something to say for a change. I think that this was the first time we actually had a normal conversation. Conversation with that harpy? About what, I wonder? Was she giving you advice on how to make yourself spineless? Or were you just discussing boys? You really shouldn't go there or someone might think that you're jealous. Because of your little chat? Please. Seriously, Sophia, you could really try talking to Gloria someday. Having tea with her without spiking hers with rat poison. I would never do such a thing. Red poison is easily traceable. <laughs> I see. I think you've just given me a bit too much information there, Sophia. Are oh, you such a child sometimes? In case you didn't notice, we're living in the middle of a dangerous and unforgiving forest. This, pa this place is packed with wild, bloodthirsty predators. <coughs> and whether we choose to see them or not, they exist. What a lovely thought, I will think about it on my trip through the woods today. Oh, you're going out again? I have to eat something first, but yes, I'm going out. Why? Um, i just wondering if you will... What is it? Sophia, are you blushing? Don't be ridiculous, of course I'm not blushing. I'm just thinking that maybe you could use some company. You want to leave the house? Yes, is that a crime? Dearest Sophia, no, not in my book. Of course I'd love to go with you. But a lot is happening now and I wanted to have some time to think alone. I'm really sorry, maybe some other time. When Carmosa is back, right, I'll get back to my room and stay there then, forever. Oh no. Don't be like that, I'm really sorry, you just caught me by surprise, but I really would want to go out with you whenever we get the next chance. Yes, yes, I understand. Go then and have fun doing your secret stuff. I am surprised they're not letting me decide that, but okay. Thanks, I will. I'll see you in the evening. Sorry again. Another day of freedom I can spend on the town. There's always something going on here. Even now I see some commotion in the street, I wonder what it is about. The moment I saw my cow die, I die, I knew it, it wasn't those evil beats of yours that did it. What are you talking about, woman? My poor Molly has died and she was in so much pain for days. She moved like she has never moved before, it was, always, it was almost like moaning or crying. It was your fault, I have seen the bad omens. My poor Molly moaning and the odor of her wretched body made. It must have been your curse, witch. Cows smell on their own and your Molly didn't need my help in that department. You might not have noticed, because you only bathe occasionally. 
My poor Molly is dead, lifeless as a clump of mud on the street, and the heartless witch that you are dare to jest about it. I knew it was you doing, you wretched. I'm laughing because there is little else to do. How else should I react to your stupidity? You want someone to blame? I told you to come to me so I could take a look at your bloody cow and heal it. But did you listen? No, the animal's pain was not enough reason to spare a few coins. But I did bring her to you. When it was terminal, before that you said it is, it is for fate to decide what happens. And who would have guessed it doesn't work out well. But you said that, but you said the cow would die, and she did. I said it'd die if you won't take care of it. The damn cow was seriously ill. You could see that for yourself. You only came to me when it couldn't move anymore. Only when you realize trusting fate won't do. Well, too late. Now you're searching for someone else to take blame for your stupidity. Oh, but she didn't die until you looked at her, you witch. This whole town knows you are bad news. You are not welcome here. Shut up or else I will turn you into a frog or a cow to compensate for your loss. What's going on here? Oh, good captain, please arrest this evil witch for killing my poor Molly with her evil eye and her devilish beads. She has... Molly? My poor cow, she was so kind and helpful and... Is there any truth to what she accuses you of? I'm not even going to dignify that foolishness with an answer if this idiot doesn't want to take responsibility for her own actions. Fine, but leave me out of this. Alright then, my dear lady, I'm going to have to ask you to go home and wait till I sort this out. But I will make it my responsibility to sort this out. Now please go home and do not pursue this matter on your own. Do you understand? Yes, yes I do. Fine. I do apologize for this woman's behavior and I hope you have not been bothered by this. You know how the townspeople are when they feel hurt or helpless. Oh, I know, they blame the Wicked Witch, sometimes with the help of torches and pitchforks. I hope, however, that you realize that you are welcome here. These are good people, they just get carried away sometimes. They expect you to always be able to bail them out of their problems. For generations, they did that. Of all the old noble professions, yours is still needed. Oh yes, I am so needed that you had to intervene. How many times has it been now? Them blaming me for their own stupidity, this town sure has a strange way of showing appreciation. It might be the time to move on now. Now surely you don't mean that. Just yesterday this young woman told everyone in the inn how much you have helped her and... Sure, a grateful lady nobody listens to one day. Insults, blame and pitchforks the next. That seems like a good cue to leave. You have good reasons to be angry. Oh, just give me some time, please. I need to think. Someone in this town should anyway. Fine, I will not press you on this further. You will do as you see fit, like you always do. Until next time, madame. Keep warm and away from those idiots. Farewell, captain. What happened here, exactly? People are strange here, illogical and stupid. They just sit and demand, do nothing and hope. Morons. The time has come for me to change the scenery. What did they do? Oh, nothing spectacular, just more of the usual. People come to me for medicine, for advice, for a solution to every stupid problem they have created. I would just like to add to this whole cow thing that she doesn't care about the cow itself, that she only cares about the milk she probably gives. They still fear me though, every time something goes wrong I am to blame. They used to blame the devil or evil forces, now the evil forces conveniently live next door. Surely the town's fault do not need that, they seem to respect you a lot. There's a very thin line between respect and fear, this happens in every single place I travel to. It takes time for resentment to build up, however, a new town should do. But you have friends here, just a second ago I thought I saw you speaking with the captain on very familiar and mostly friendly terms. Is there more going on? I have asked myself. <laughs> oh, we do have some history together, told you. But do not let me bore you with the details. <laughs> oh, go ahead, please. <laughs> Your curiosity is commendable. But let's discuss something out, something of more importance. Have you given any thought to our last conversation? Not yet, I haven't had, had the time to. Good, that means I don't have to give more advice right now. <coughs> So take your time, Cinders, and come to me when you have decided. 
you don't you don't uh, what just don't wait too long because i intend to leave this damn town soon and i will not look back thank you i will take time to consider and decide soon you do that goodbye child goodbye that woman really got to her who would have thought those tough cynical madame gate whose wrath can move mountains touched by a simple towns townswoman's remark i wouldn't say that if every day someone's picking on you at some point you just don't want anymore i will have to consider that side of her vulnerable and so human but right now i have a whole day of freedom to plan as i will what shall i do now maybe pay to buy us a visit again hmm Tobias deserves another visit, especially as Carmosa is getting back tomorrow and it may be hard to see each other again. Hello there, Mr. Merchant. Hello, Cinders, what brings you to my humble establishment? I was just around the town again and thought it'd be nice to drop by, no special reason. I see you're well enjoying your newly found freedom. Can't deny it. So, how was your day? I'm glad you've asked. Something strange happened that I need to talk about. That or I'll start wondering if I dreamt it. Oh, did you win the royal lottery? Just as improbable. I actually had a conversation with Gloria. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that it? The unreal thing was that you talked with your sister? So I presume it was something more than a simple exchange of results? To be honest, I'm not sure what it was myself, but it was different. We were both speaking and I think this time she was listening. She also said that I'm free to do what I wish today. Now that's just awkward. Would you like to get some herbs? I'm sure she must be ill. <laughs> I'm serious, Tobias. It may seem like nothing to you, but believe me. Those little things that are probably ordinary in normal families, they don't happen in our house. Maybe she sees and understands more than you like to give her credit for. With all the blindness that comes from her resentment towards you, she'd have to be a complete fool not to realize that she cannot control you indefinitely. It sounds manipulative and complex, so there's a large chance that it's exactly what made her, or Carmosa, give me a day off. There's also the slight ch chance of Gloria just trying to be nice to her sister for a change. Do you think that's even possible? Oi, boss sir, you wouldn't happen to have a new task for your old mate, now would you? Gold has a habit of running from my pockets like cats in heat and your last payment. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> you! The pretty bird, now isn't this a friendly get-together? If I'm the bird, then what does that make you? You certainly have a way of appearing out of the blue anywhere I go. First in the woods, then in my own house. And now here, you must be the most popular person in the whole kingdom. In any case, you came just in time, in time to answer my questions and answer them fully. And candidly. Such terrible words come from that pretty mouth. Frankly, Cinders, I'm curious as well. A bit uneasy, but mostly curious. Oh, it's all very simple, really. Two days ago, you came to our home to talk with Carmosa. I want to know what, what, what was it about. But I've told you, it's nothing big, lassie. Rumors are me. Are me. Great, so keep your petticoat on. Ah, yes, a very weird British accent or dialect. Saw so that was a little gossip for a little coin. Everybody knows that Carmosa smiles when she learns that she can get something for free. Why would she pay you? Little Missy Shore's curious, and so is the old lady. She's even more curious than she is stingy, and so she pays generously. Very good, my friend. You're more clever than I thought, finding out what kind of information interests someone like Carmosa. Actually knowing her in the first place. Say you never told how exactly did you meet Lady Carmosa. Gossips me trade and devil take me if I'm giving anything for free cause some lassie fanned her lashes. That's all, um, a trade secret. Am I right, boss sir? She does have a point here and her question certainly piqued my, in my curiosity. I reckon the little bird picked something up all right. Tell her. Nasty business mates, nasty ambush. Methinks I'll just run for the door now and call it a day. It's been swell talking. Not a step. As a law-abiding subject of our prince, I'm obliged to report any crime or mischief I know of, I know of to the captain and his guard. I'm sure Perot would love to get something solid on you, but suspicious behavior and conspiracy will have to do. 
I'm sure it's enough for a lovely night in the dungeon. I I can't believe you'd snitch on your old mate's poster. It's business, nothing personal, friend. <laughs> it's where, that's where the mafia starts. <laughs> hmm. Fine, I'll tell you. But only the messy here will hear it. Bloody hell, some demon speaks through those red lips. You must take me for a complete fool if you think I'll let her go alone with you so you can flee. It's alright, Tobias, you won't run, will you, boss? He knows that it would force me to inform the captain, whom I saw just a moment ago, right outside, uh, right outside the store. Yes, Missy, anything you say. Very well. I knew we would come to an agreement sooner or later. Would you like to step outside and tell me everything, my friend? Yes, Missy, lead on. Are you sure about this, Cinders? Don't worry, we're all friends here, after all. <laughs> All right, let's stop here and talk. Not exactly a hiding place in the middle of the town, eh, love? Sure could use some more privacy. I'm not going to give you a chance to escape now, and don't try anything stupid. The captain's right on the other side of the street. Remember that. Fine, you little devil. I'll tell you what I know. Just don't, tell, just don't yell if I can't remember all the details. I've short memory. You've heard my question already. What was the message you brought to Carmosa? A dashing young gentleman like yourself should have no trouble recalling the last few days. Blazing hell, I see you and your adder's tongue. Aye, I remember. So I was out in the woods, resting my head on the ground. Enjoying the peace and quiet that only nature can bring. Calm shimmer of the lake, away from the wickedness. Don't digress. Of the city. Sleeping like a bread, I was. Do you often sleep outdoors? Why were you sleeping by the lake? Now that's a mighty good question, isn't it, love? Can't say I know the answer, though. I just woke up there. Oh, land magical place. The pond in the woods my me auntie used to tell me stories of. Get back to the topic, will you? But I'm on it. I woke up and heard voices. Thought twas just like me auntie's stories of the fair folk, you know? Made of light and wisp, prettier than the finest ladies they are. But they were no wisps. And what happened then? I hit, what else? This head's still upon the snack cause it knows when it's time to jump into the bushes. You know what I mean, who were those people? Ah, an excellent question, Birdie. Me gut tells me you love this. It was the noble Captain Perot, and he was talking to... The Prince. The Prince was talking with Perot in the woods? It seems a bit strange, doesn't it? What were they talking about? Oh, some posh problems of the rich folk. Too much free time is bad for the head. Our future His Royal Highness kept on whining about ventures of all things, how they're all empty-headed or boring to talk to. The prince was discussing women? That he was, very unca unkingly of him if you ask me, and foolish too, who cares if the bird's dumb or dull? That's not what I want from me wenches. Yes, wonderful, now back to the subject please, what did they speak of? The captain said something about rules, but I didn't hear that part with my head still spinning and the water shimmering so loud. Don't know what they meant, but the prince was mighty happy and said something about the ball, the grand ball. He got some idea in that royally empty head of his. I heard it's cause of them crowns, very bad for the head. Anyway, there was a new idea that he liked. The grand ball? It doesn't sound familiar. That's the excuse they made up so that the kings and princes can pick their wenches like vegetables in the market. Only regular folk don't crone the cucumbers they bought as queens, at least not often. So it's a tradition. Yeah, that. They always use that fancy name if something doesn't make any sense anymore. So what was the prince's new idea? It was about masks, making all the lassies wear them. You mean a masked ball, a masquerade? I didn't know the rich birds are so horrid. I don't think it's because of that. Did he say why the masks are so important to him? It had something to do with the elders, the families, lots of lords and ladies waiting to trade their daughters and only one prince. Too much competition is bad for business and tempers. So he's trying to dodge accusations of being biased. Clever. Hmm. Aye, I knew that. Don't know what's wrong with seeing a nice face, though. And what if the bird's got a pimple right between her eyes, won't notice nothing with masks and such, unless he wants to ogle her curves. 
They're curves. Ooh, bit on the nasty side, nobles. Mi auntie told me stories, gossip really about the shenanigans going on between them and the palace. Stuff that made a confessor blush. All right, I get the picture. A masked ball, you say. It makes a lot of sense, actually. The prince can pretend he's choosing his bride by judging her more subtle qualities. There's no way of any of the houses accusing him of favoring one over another. Who knows, maybe he isn't really pretending. Perhaps having a choice is what he really wants. Devilishly clever, love. Glad you've, you've got the smarts to see through all that. Saved me time having to explain all that to ya. Both for the noble birds and they, ha they all have a chance, no matter how pimply or horrid. Made me think of Carmosa and her pretty lassies. Hmm. No, not you, the other wenches, I mean sisters, your lovely sisters. Figured the old lady would pay with kingly coin for rumor like that. So there's to it. You satisfied, love? My dear friend, this isn't even half of the story I want to hear. You better get to the more juicy stuff right away. It's all there's to it, I swear on my auntie's pimples. Ah, oh, let me drink some water first. Appeal to his morals, what morals? I will focus on the connection with Carmosa. It's all fine and beautiful what you've told me, but there are so many things missing, my friend. Like, why is it so important for Carmosa that the ball will be a masquerade? But what puzzles me even more is how come you knew it'd be interesting for her in the first place. You would have to know her pretty well to figure that. This has something to do with, with your past, doesn't it? You've been working for her, for her for quite some time, haven't you? <laughs> oh, we unlocked a trophy, woohoo! Fine, there's one thing, a wee detail, really nothing. Really nothing? I knew this rumor would be worth a lot for the lady, you know. I know her and know what she's like. So you did work for her before, what did you do? I might have given her a hand earlier with the balls, with the ball lob so she could get in. Ow! The goose and her ducklings weren't exactly invited, the lady asked me to help them. Help them how? Oh, let's just say it required a bit of quality craftsmanship. You mean you forged invitations for them? Me? Sure I didn't. Me talents knowing folks with talents of their own. Got them invitations from a friend. <laughs> Reckon the old lady's bit dim if she thought nobody noticed she got in with fake papers. But hey, who is me humble person to double a noble lady and her ways of spending money? And that's how you learned how important the ball was for her. So when you heard about the masquerade you told her about that as well. As you said, she could get in with fake papers, but she would risk getting recognized, not so much if it's a masked ball, and that's why this information was worth so much to her. I see, it's only a wee job, a nil. Only natural this bloke forgot all about it, eh? So this means that she could actually be in deep trouble, incredible, Carmosa ordered a forgery, this could be my chance. Oi, Lassie, you even listening? Can I go now? A man can handle only so many stressful events in one day, you realize? This could be my leverage. What? Oh yes, you can do what you wish. You already helped me a lot. <coughs> oh, Carmosa, your secrets really are your greatest weakness. Can you imagine? And Carmosa withheld that minor detail from all of us. Who would have thought your old friend was such an able business person? He sure gets around. Oh yes, let us concentrate on the aptitude of the unimportant guy. The big problem and potential scandal is not going anywhere, anyhow. I'm sorry, Cinders, it's just a big surprise for me. As well as information of some consequence. He's ju he is just a vagabond, you see, and everyone recognizes him as one. And I have hired him numerous times, always for some minor and menial tasks. And yet here he is, a sparkling potential criminal mastermind. Who would have... Tobias, concentrate. What is the subject of this conversation? Oh, this is hard. Um, not him then? Very good. See, you can do it if you try hard enough. Alright, back to the main point. What do you want to do with this newly acquired information? I have no idea yet. Do you think this could get Carmosa into prison? Oh, this is what you want? Is this what you want? I'm not sure yet. I'm just weighing my options. 
Well, in that case, it definitely could be used against her, but would it suffice? I'm not so sure. Do you think I should try to get her arrested? You should be the one to make this decision, just as it will be you to experience its consequences. Would you succeed? What would happen to the house if you did? Those are just some of the factors you should take into consideration. Take your time to think it over. It actually sounds very wise and not entirely unhelpful. Thank you. I guess I'll go for a walk around the city and think about it. Sounds like a pleasant idea. Would you like some company? Thank you, but I think I will stick to your advice. Of course, I suppose you deserve some time to yourself to think and discover what you really want. I'm sorry, I didn't want to intrude. <coughs> Unfortunately, my voice uh, slowly starts to give up. Hmm. By no means, thank you for your offer. I just want to take a solitary walk, that is all. Well, if you need any support or just feel like chatting, you know where to find me. Thank you, Tobias. See you soon. It's astonishing what a simple walk can do to one's spirits. If I'm going to miss the freedom to do something, then above all else it's going to be the freedom to wander about whenever I please. When I walk with no specific goal, no destination, I can just switch off and observe my thoughts jumping into their little drawers with each step. And strolling through the market has its moments too. I saw the most gorgeous shoes. <laughs> Not that I can ever afford them. They were crazily expensive. I get that they were imported from the eastern lands, but at that price they should be made of diamonds and dragon skin. Who buys something like that? I mean, I know I would if I could, but that's beside the point, right? Ah, forget about it. No reason to dwell on such things. I still haven't decided what to do with my newly gained knowledge. Everything about this business screams that I should use it as leverage, but I don't know how. Not yet. At least it gives me some space, some secure distance from Carmosa, knowing that I know about one of her precious secrets. It's almost sunset, I should be getting back home. So long, Freedom. It was a pleasure. Hope to see you soon. Maybe you could come and visit sometime, or at least write. Back to the same old, this feels almost like coming back to prison and out of my own will. After two such wonderful days of freedom, it's depressing to know I need to go back to my ordinary life. There out in the real world, I can meet amazing people, have actual friends. Here, I'm trapped between Carmosa's plots and her poor daughter's bitterness. Sometimes I wonder, what if I were to vanish in the woods? Would anyone notice or care? Maybe that's the answer, getting lost in the wilderness, befriending an uncivilized but noble tribe of rather short miners, becoming their princess. <laughs> Spending the rest of my days being adored, praised and... Oh, get a grip on yourself, cinders. At least I learned some really interesting things today. Interesting and possibly dangerous for Carmosa. Maybe it's going to be my wild card in this game. Sometimes I wonder if all families are like mine, broken, conflicted and utterly unpleasant. Or is it just an ability thing? I'm really tired, it's time to go to bed. Well, a lot of people keep up appearances and... A lot of family keep up appearances and... Well, in, on the inside it's, it's, it can be terrible. But yeah, sometimes you also have the opposite. It looks terrible on the outside, but everything is, is fine on the inside. I'm really tired, it's time to go to bed, and tomorrow morning, oh, I can't wait. It will be a bliss. Meanwhile at the palace. You have summoned me, my prince? That I did. You must be wondering why I wanted to see you at this hour, surely you have guessed it must be about something important. I will have to ask you to make an important decision, and I will not be expecting you to give me your answer right away. My lord? Let me explain, Perot. As you know, we live in a time of transition and my father's death changed many things. Being so close to our family, you are aware that the old king spent most of his days trying to compromise between <coughs> extremes a balance between order and freedom. 
With little success, despite, despite his best wishes, all his life he remained an autocrat. That is why it has been my wish and my vision to change the kingdom, kingdom in such a way as to eliminate the need to compromise between freedom and order altogether. Oh, wait a second. I guess my voice is really strained today because yesterday I was recording another video. Oh, I was recording for another video, so... In other words, Perot, I want reforms, but I am sure you know this. I do, my prince. I have known you long enough to be able to learn about the qualities of your character. I want to give the people a constitution, Perot. I don't want them to be subjects, I want them to be citizens. I see. This will not make you more popular among the nobles, sire. If that's even possible. Now he just realizes that if he if he doesn't have children <laughs> then then monarchy is over. If that's even possible. You are not a king yet, my lord, and there's some unrest among the nobles. I wouldn't announce your plans just yet. They may they make you an easy target. Yes they do, that's exactly why I need your protection. You already have it. You know I'd give my life serving the crown. I am your sword and shield, my lord. Yes, yes, my friend, I know that, but these are a different kind of enemies I am going to face during my reign. I will be giving people more freedom, but that means taking away some of that old precious order. The nobles won't stand for it, they will want my head. They wouldn't dare. Of course not, that would give me a reason to ask for their heads. They will not do anything openly. Do you understand now what I speak of, Perot? So you want me to spy for you? It is the new battlefield, Captain, the theater of war of our times, and the crown needs you to be our champion. Champion? But it isn't an honorable war, it's a war of lies. It is a war of discretion and intelligence, qualities I know you possess in abundance, not to mention loyalty. Forgive me, my lord, I don't want to come across as naive, I am simply not accustomed to all the subtleties of ruling, I am surprised. What would you require of me in this new service? You would have to spend more time at the court, that much is certain. Keep your eyes and ears open and, of course, socialize much more. Oh god, no. People. Oh. You would have to trade those blades of yours for our exquisite wild go white gold cutlery. I'm afraid, and maybe do something about those outfits, all those belts. I see, this is not exactly... this isn't... You don't have to decide right away. Also, you do have a choice. I'm not a tyrant after all. Should you choose to distance yourself from this lovely mess I am planning for the realm, you can leave your current as service with honor and retire. Your patrolling duty is purely ceremonial nowadays and the guards have their officers. As it is, your position at, at the court is a matter of empty traditionalism, nothing more. You would send me away? To where? Oh, I'm certain there's some picturesque and lucrative strip of royal land left that I can make you account of. How about Middle Hollow? Such a quaint little place. That's simple? This is very surprising. It's strange. It's a strange thing to learn that you are not needed. Rubbish, Peru. The crown needs you. I need you. This is precisely why I'm asking you to make your own decision. If I'm not to rule, I have to learn to make difficult choices and this is my first. If I am to rule, what? If I am to rule, I have to learn to make difficult choices, and this is my first. I am not ordering you to become the new royal master spy, I am giving you a choice. Not only because I know that you wouldn't make a good agent serving me against your own will, but also because you are my friend, Peru. Well, he's giving him a choice, but the choice is really weird. Become my spy or become a count somewhere in the land and um, in probably in a rural area and Perot probably doesn't really want to do that either. Hmm. If that's the case, I reckon I'd prefer to be just a subject. It will be enough, Captain. Let us not say things we will regret later. Very well, my lord. Will this be all, my prince? Yes, Captain. Give me proposal some... Give my proposal some thought. I would have your answer within the next few days. Now go.
Okay, this is the next morning. We finished another day, another chapter. And so I will end this video for today. Um, yeah, I hope if you enjoyed this video that you uh, might subscribe to my channel and give the video a like. And otherwise just tell me in the comments how bad my decisions are, how bad my reading, vo uh, my reading voice is. Um, but in a civilized manner. And otherwise, thank you for watching. And until next time, bye bye.